Good morning. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion this morning on this Trinity Sunday. Uh, if you'd like to just turn to your notice sheets and look at page four, uh, just a quick reminder that it's the uh, summer fair coming up fast. So if you've got anything for it that you want to leave here, please do bring it. Um, and on the 18th, that's next Saturday, we've uh, we've got the um, Spirit of Chelliston stall, the Churches stall, uh, Churches Together stall, down on the wreck. So please do come and support that if you can. I'm going to leave you to um, read the rest of the notices yourselves. Okay. On page six is the creed that we'll be using this morning because it's Trinity Sunday. So when Norma gets to that bit while she's leading the service, she will point you towards it. Okay. Right, so we'll stand and sing our first hymn, number 314. Please do be seated for a moment. We do have some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between David John Porter of this parish and Mandy Kate Archer also of this parish. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Thank you. Could I also just remind you that Joan Brown's funeral will be held here tomorrow at two o'clock. Remember little Joan who used to be in the choir with us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the Gloria. Please stand if you're able. Please be seated. So we say together the collect for Trinity Sunday, which you will find on page five of your notice sheet down at the bottom. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we have our readings. The reading is from Proverbs 8, verses 1 to 4 and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the path meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all humanity. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long years ago, at the very beginning, when the world came to be. When there was no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water. 
Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills I was given birth. Before he made the, the world or his fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that the waters could not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was con constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his world, the whole world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand as we are able to sing hymn number 485, 485, over a thousand tongues to sing.
remain standing for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Open my lips that I may proclaim your word and our hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. And do sit down. I don't like labels. When I was a form teacher, girls sometimes joined my form in September with a label, troublemaker or future head girl, that sort of thing. I preferred to meet them without the label and to get to know them as the person they really were. I wonder what labels you'd give me. I exist in relation to other people. I'm a wife, a mother, a sister, a friend. I have various jobs and roles. I was a teacher. I'm now a trainee reader and so on. How would you describe yourself? Imagine you were writing a sticky label for yourself. What would you put on it? And can you try and do it in three words? I think you can't do it in three words, can you? Not easily. I think I'd choose wife, mother, teacher. But there could be many more. That's two to do with my family, because I think we normally put family first, and one to do with my job. Was one of these words more important than the other two? Or were they equal? Did I stop being a mother when I got to school and became a teacher? Well, no. Remember those two teachers recently who tried to protect their young pupils from that gunman in the States? They did what any mother would do. Who we are is usually shown by how we behave and what we do not by any label we or others may choose to give us. Today is Trinity Sunday, and the reading we've just listened to is one of the few passages in the New Testament where all three persons of the Trinity are mentioned, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The word Trinity itself isn't used in the New Testament. Jesus speaks to his disciples about his close relationship with God the Father. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And about the spirit of truth who is to come to guide them. All three appear at Jesus' baptism when a voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son. And the spirit descends in the form of a dove. At the end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus sends his disciples out to go and make disciples of all nations baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Paul, St Paul, concludes his second letter to the Corinthians with the familiar words, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that's all. So what is the Trinity? In a minute we'll be saying the creeds together. And today, Norm has chosen a special creed, the Trinitarian creed, which is on your newsletter, which speaks of one God, 
a community of three in a unity of being, which I like very much. But the more familiar words of the Nicene Creed we say most weeks are, we believe in one God, the Father, and so on, one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. So is this one God with lots of names or different roles, like an actor perhaps? Or is he three distinct persons? People started asking these questions very early on, and there's been much debate and dispute on the subject for centuries since. Well, we don't worship three different gods, do we? But we do speak about the three persons of the Trinity. So does this one God perhaps change his shape when he acquires a different power, a bit like Clark Kent? Or does he have different labels, as we tried to give ourselves earlier? So I'd like to think about designing for him three different T-shirts rather than labels, because he's so much greater than we are. And each will say God on the front and something else on the back. So let's start off with God the Father. How shall we label him? And we had some good things in the Proverbs reading earlier, actually. Creator of the world, giver of all life, almighty, ancient of days, wise, judge. He's everywhere, immortal, invisible, like in the hymn. He raised Jesus from the dead. He led the Israelites out of Egypt, and so on. What about God the Son? It's on the front. And on the back, our Lord Jesus Christ, or just Jesus, Redeemer and Saviour, Word of God, Prince of Peace, God incarnate on earth, the image of God. He shows us what we could be, and so on. And more difficult, perhaps, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaks of him as our advocate, which means someone who's there for us and our comforter. He's God's active presence in the world and within us, enabling us to lead a Christian life. If you saw last week's Pentecost poster, you'll have seen words like fount of life, fire of love, dove of peace, spirit of truth. And people who heard Philip's sermon last Wednesday will want to add the word dynamite. But remember those mothers I mentioned earlier. God doesn't change his T-shirt when he changes role. He is always all of these things. So should we design perhaps for him an extra large T-shirt with all of those, with God on the front and all of those uh, names, labels on the back and more? Have to be a very large T-shirt. But is it right to think like this at all? Because we're human, we like to label God in human terms, using words and images we can easily understand. Sometimes in terms of a father-son relationship, as Jesus did. Sometimes by his role or his actions. And we respond to him differently in different situations, without, I think, worrying too much about which aspect of God we mean. He's revealed to us in the pages of the Bible and in our everyday lives and those of the people around us and in our Christian worship and experiences. So isn't he in church with us now? Isn't he sitting behind you or next to you? We can't see him, but we can feel his presence. We can't see the wind, but we can see its power in the movement of the leaves or the destruction caused by a storm. So look around you. Can you see God in someone else? Can you feel his presence in you? And when you pray, who do you pray to? Today's collect addresses God and is offered uh, in the merits of Jesus Christ, our our saviour, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, which I think is a bit of a mouthful. When you pray, do you listen for the words of the Spirit speaking in you? If you're in need of healing, do you perhaps address Jesus, our healer, 
or God, our loving Father. Listen out for what I do later in the prayers. Is God the Father more likely to answer your prayers if you address him directly? Is he the boss? Well, Raylan, Raymond's lent me this delightful statue, which I think you probably can't see, so do come and look at, come and look at it afterwards. Uh, and it's a statue from Ghana, carved out of wood. It shows the Trinity. They're completely distinct, but inseparably linked. And they're all made of wood. They're inseparably linked, like the bond of love and understanding, which links Father, Son, and Spirit closely to each other. The Trinity is inseparable and works together. So whichever telephone number you use, you'll get through to him. The Trinity isn't a mathematical problem or a linguistic exercise, but more like a pattern or a recipe for living. We're all individuals, but we are also all God's people, made and chosen by him, blessed by him with his gift of the Holy Spirit, sent into the world as God's image on earth, as Jesus was. We are his hands, his eyes, his heart, members of the fellowship of the church, called to live in a loving relationship with one another and with God that resembles the close, loving relationship between the three persons of the Trinity. It's our relationship with him and how we live out our lives that's important. Human analogies and vocabulary are inadequate to express the divine mystery that is the Trinity. As St Augustine said, if you can fully grasp it, it isn't God. So, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Many thanks, Alison. Brilliant. And now if you all turn to page six of your notice sheet, you will find the Trinitarian Creed there, which we'll stand as we are able to say together. We believe in one God, a community of three in a unity of being. We believe in the Creator, creator of sky, earth and sea, maker of microbes and plants, birds, animals and fish, and us, creator of all that is seen, unseen and unimaginable. We believe in Jesus Christ, born of God, born of woman, born, lived, died and rose again, born to teach, save and give us hope. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the all-pervading breath of God, who breathed life into us in the beginning, who breathed life into the church at Pentecost, who brings gifts and strength and encouragement. We believe in God, the three in one, the one in three, the blessed, sacred Trinity, an eternal dance of personality, diversity in unity, creator, redeemer, sustainer. We believe in the church, diversity in unity, a community stretching around the globe and through the ages and stretching out to all creation, redeeming, sustaining. We believe in God, we live in God, three in one, one in three, the living, loving Trinity. Amen. And Alison is now going to lead us in prayer. So let us pray.
Glory be to God the Father, who made and sustains us and all the world. Glory be to Jesus Christ, his Son, who redeemed us all through his death on the cross. Glory be to God the Holy Spirit, fount of life and fire of love. O God, all loving, all holy and all wise, we worship you. Holy God, builder, cornerstone and strength of the church and of all your faithful people. Your son Jesus Christ prayed that we might be one as you are one. We pray for your church throughout the world. Look in mercy on us all and break down the barriers which keep us from you and from each other. May your Holy Spirit inspire us and fill us with generous faith, courageous hope and life-giving love that all the world may believe that you sent your Son to be Saviour of us all. We give thanks for our church family, for each other, and for the fellowship we enjoy with the churches in Chelliston, and for the leadership and example of our ministers, BJ, Norma, Rachel, Leslie and Amanda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, ruler, judge, and advocate of all nations. We pray for your world, asking that all countries and communities may work together as one as we face its challenges together. Bring order out of chaos and turn darkness into light. Unite all races and nations and help us to put an end to the prejudices and differences which divide us so that we may all live together without enmity or fear. We pray for all parts of the world where there is warfare and persecution, praying in particular at this time for the people of Ukraine. May your Holy Spirit rest on all those who bear responsibility as leaders of the nations. Grant them wisdom and understanding that they may see your vision of peace and justice and work together to make it a reality. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Generous God, creator, saviour and fount of life, we give you thanks for the world you have made. May we learn to value your gifts and share the world's resources. Give us the will and the courage to take action today for the sake of tomorrow, mindful that we are stewards of this earth and hold it in trust for our children and future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, united with your Son and with the Holy Spirit in an et eternal bond of love, <clears throat> we commend to you our families and those dear to us, our friends, members of our communities, those we see often and those we rarely see. As you sent your only Son into the world, as a sign of your love for us. Deepen our awareness of the needs of others and help us to show our love for each other in our everyday lives, by our actions and in our prayers. May we be your eyes, your hands and your hearts in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the poor, healer and comforter of all those in any kind of need. We ask you to bless all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. In their weakness or anxiety, draw near to them. Give them hope in their troubles and send your healing power upon them. Bless all those whom you've called to share in your son's ministry of healing as doctors and nurses and grant them patience, sympathy and skill. Today we pray for all those on our traffic light prayer list and in silence by name for anyone known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, redeemer and promise of everlasting life, we pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones and we give thanks for lives well lived. We rejoice in the certainty that they are now with you in your loving embrace in heaven, where we will join them. We pray for the families and friends of those who have died recently 
and those who miss them. And today we remember Joan Brown, Jim Freeman, Eric Perman, Mary Christie, and all those dear to us whom we see no longer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a few moments of quiet, let us bring before God our own particular prayers and petitions. Gracious and ever-loving God, we offer our lives to you. Help us always to be open to your spirit in our thoughts and feelings and actions. Support us as we seek to learn more about those habits of the Christian life, which, as we practice them, will form in us the character of Jesus by establishing us in the way of faith, hope and love. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers. prayers. For the sake, the sake of, of your, your Son, son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Let us just offer one another a sign of peace. I think we continue with waves at the moment. <laughs> Our offertory hymn is number 684, Thou Whose Almighty Word. <coughs>
We give thanks to God for the gifts given so wonderfully to us today. And we say the prayer at the top of page nine together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed the glory of your eternal fellowship of love with your Son and with the Holy Spirit. Three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendour, yet one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. <laughs> Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Acts 
accept through him our great high priest this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty renew us by your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son jesus christ our lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. <laughs> As our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Linda, would you come up and hold the cup for me, please?
heart of Christ keep you in the eternal life. keep you in eternal
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Let Your Living Water and you will find it on the slip of paper you were given when you came in. the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and keep you all safe this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 